previously on balls. Okay. <laughs> so keep, let's not keep our uh, friend go. waiting. He's sitting, concentrating. So, are you there, David? I'm listening to you guys. All right. Doesn't look like we were... You were riveted by our conversation. No, it's pretty boring, actually, Dara. Yeah, well, it's like watching Aussie play rugby, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you, we're very lucky to uh, draw the test, though. Who? Uh, please, man, that was... The cricket. Oh, that, that was, was the character. hanging in there. Commitment. That was one of the greatest performances you'll ever see, my friend. Yeah, you still didn't win. No, but we <laughs> did. did you? And it's looking terrible. Hey, but, yeah, yeah, but you're the number one team in the world, hey? Yeah, but you yeah, can't but even knock us over. Record. You can't even bowl us out in two days in yeah, Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah, I think you might be in trouble at the Wacker, my friend. <laughs> no, I think you guys are in trouble at the Wacker. All right, well, uh, listen, uh, we'll be coming down there, so I can always bring one of the new Madibas down, uh, one or two of those. Have <laughs> you prepared to put one or two on? No, I'm not, not like that, though. I'd just like to talk about it, but, you know, that's about All it. Right. Okay, but I won't mind you when I see you on the 8th. Oh, that, of course uh, you will. <laughs> that we won the series and are still world number one in cricket. Uh, oh. Nowhere near that in rugby, though. Gee, how was that... Uh, how was that dog show at the end there from England? Oh, I can understand. How can you, four minutes ago, four <laughs> points behind and you kicked for goal? David always starts every Monday with, how, how can, can you? you? We're going to change this feature to David's, how, how can, can you? you? <laughs> <laughs> but what was going through well, his head? What do you want me to say? I mean, it was a great decision for the box, wasn't it? Gee, we was all punching the air. Rob Shaw was our best player. I know, but I mean, actually, uh, well, you could see him. He went to the referee and said, how long to go? And he's gone, four minutes. And he said, yeah, okay, we'll take a shot. Obviously, he didn't go to school, realising four minutes, take him in to kick the ball, and then it's going to take, uh, you've got to go all the way to your own try line to get up the other end and score again. Yeah, uh, but you know what, with four minutes, it was probably that's what did him in, because he thought, okay, four minutes, we can get within another kick. So we'll kick this one over, and then... Um, get back in their half and we've got a chance of a drop goal or a penalty but I mean but I I not thinking that we'll run the clock down it's so far behind and all they do is kick the ball away I mean the Welsh game was just they're losing by 32 to nil at one stage wasn't it yeah and then they um, every time they get it from there they kick it away I thought how stupid is that that is absolutely no brains yeah by rugby. and then they go and, and then they the, the, the one time they do score they do a fifth what a 15 man line out Oh, fantastic rugby, wasn't it? <laughs> Where does that come from? And then the commentators said, well, the Welsh are on their way back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so after the blacks had changed, I think, the entire side and brought their reserves on. For the second try, it was like, oh, yes, it's uh, the game's well. It's, it's just, out of, just out of their reach now. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, my goodness. It seems like, just sorry, Simon, before you go, it seems like the rugby season has finally come to an end in a, a kind of a farcical way. You look at, I mean, Tonga winning. It's like crazy. Uh, unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, Scotland beat Australia this year in Newcastle. Um, and they win all the other games and they come up against Tong and lose at home. And then the coach resigns. Yeah. Yeah, but also, I don't know if you've heard, Robbie Dean said uh, he puts the Australian performance in the second half down to fatigue. It's been a long season. So, well, I mean, if you guys want to play that many test matches, and Australia's actually played less games than anyone else because we haven't got the Curry Cup, haven't got the um, the ITM Cup in New Zealand, so they only play test rugby or Super 15 rugby. So I can't see where that excuse comes from. But then also, um, why go and play the test at the end of the year then? Yeah. The Kiwis are really the only ones who can actually change 10 players and still turn out a very good team. Simon? I just wanted to get Campo's thoughts on that whole Andrew Hoare incident. What do you think needs to happen to him? What did he do? He um, he knocked... Uh, oh, yes, I saw that. That was a shocker, wasn't it? Yeah. Davies. Swinging arm. Yeah, Davies. From behind. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's amazing that no one saw that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yes, I think he's... Let me see. I think he should get about uh, two months. Yeah, eight weeks. Eight weeks for that. Yeah, that that should be an eight week. Because uh, I saw the arguments in um, it's, it's some of the in some some of the papers saying that if that had happened in the street and that had been caught on CCTV, the guy would go to jail. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, you can say that, but also, I mean, you, you saw the uh, the box guy who played in Australia almost sort of knocked off Richie McCaw's head. Hmm. He got what he got two weeks for that, didn't he? Elbow to the yeah, head. But it is Richie McCaw. Yes, I know, but every time the All Blacks um, have had guys, I can go back to Richard Lowe, 
Um, knee, uh, elbow and poor Carrozza in the head after Jeez. he scored a try. Busted his nose and he got nothing. Yeah. The All Blacks seem to get away with everything because the guys in the judiciary are normally Kiwis and everyone looks after them because they're the best and all that. I mean, you know, if he does something like that, he's right. He, he's got to go. I mean, yeah. simple. And Richard it was, just, it was callous. It wasn't. It was actually. You can see he actually deliberately did. It wasn't like oh, here he is. I hit him. Yeah. He came and just belted, knocked him out. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you go you refer to a guy like Richard Lowe, and that's what I think at some players. I know they do target some players when they think they're like Butch and, and Bucky's and guys like that. But I think players, if they have been uh, sanctioned, they should maintain. It should almost be like a suspended sentence as well. So you sit out your eight weeks, you do it again. You get a longer one next time. You mentioned a guy like Richard Lowe. He was one of the filthiest rugby players you'd ever want to meet. Yeah, but I mean, if you have a look, you know, and I could, I actually watched the games, and on Saturday, even with um, England, Alberts, yeah. not Alberts, uh, Lowe, actually belted uh, blood in the first half, no sh- no arms, shouldered him and knocked him out. Mm. You know, in the first half when he went injured, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, they're all, you've got to use your arms all of a sudden, and... And referees, don't, no one picks it up. But the thing is, they never showed it again because normally they show incidents. They didn't show it. Everyone does it. Every team is doing it without arms. The, the, the Argentinians are excellent at it. Close in by, they just shoulder charge at your knees. I mean, it's a way to destroy somebody. Mm. Camper, yeah. would you would you be in favour of um, citing at the time? So if, uh, if the citing commissioner watches the game and picks up an infringement or dirty play that he talks to the ref and says, you know, you missed that. I've seen it on the replay, red card. No, because I think the thing is, then we're going to get like American football, then we have an ads during the game as well. It might take a minute off to have an ad. There's enough stoppages now. Um, I just think if the linesman or the referee has got a white card, hasn't he? He says, look, you know, I didn't see anything, but we're going to give a white card. So... I mean, the thing is, why why wasn't that picked up? Because they showed it about four times on TV, which means it would have gone on the big screen four times. Yeah. Joubert didn't look up once. Well, no linesman actually went over and said, so, oh, mate, I think we should have a look at this. But I think, I think it's the rules, David, that say that he can't, if he hasn't penalised it there and then he can't go back after the fact and then stop it and say, well, I saw this on the big screen. Um, well, that's why they have, that's why they leave it up to the siding commissioner. But what, what you don't get is the fact that he's still on the field then for the rest of the game. Where someone that does that, uh, your team should be penalised uh, and reduced yeah. to 14 men if a guy's going to be playing because, dirty. Because the guy went off for a while, so didn't come back on, did he? Yeah. No, geez, he didn't even know where he was. And that, so the other exactly. team, the other team was Jeff, had their, um, you know, their yeah. lineup jeopardised by, by the for, for the same act. So yeah, look, it's one of those things that unfortunately it's you know they they try and clean the game up by jump in the air, you can't touch anyone in the air, and if you do, you get penalised. Sometimes if you're going for the ball, both of you, you get penalised. And yet, when you got somebody knocked out cold, <laughs> nobody saw anything. So yeah, it's just it's bizarre. Crazy. But that's why I'm, I'm very much in favour of, and I'm interested to see if you're going to be in favour of, the, uh, the rugby's version of the DRS, because we, we saw it in, 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 uh, in the cricket today. Uh, two Billy Bowden decisions that would have cost us the test match today were overturned because of the direct referral system, which would have also changed the result of the Adelaide test in 94, by the way, with Daryl Hare, had it been yeah. in place, but it wasn't. So we lost the series. We, should, well, we lost the series. We should oh, have won. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we drew a series. We should have won. And in rugby, where there's one challenge, and uh, you maintain I mean, it. What else? I mean, it's supposed to be a sport each other go and play for their country and we've got enough we've got the little referees in the middle don't understand what the scrum collapse in the scrum who should be penalised we'll show them up David yeah, but I mean, the thing is once is great I, well, I mean, we do it once can put the ball in straight in the scrum as we haven't seen one for 10 months I'm mean, going to say sir can you just have a look at that scrum I don't think you put it in straight no but they're not going to do it for that no, I know, but why? What next? What do we need? You know, no, I mean, I'm the thing is, it's a crucial forward pass that you've seen on the field, where yeah. your captain can go to the well, ref and say, "I want to look at that again," because it could out- determine the outcome of a game in the end. Yeah, but see, when rugby league in Australia, what that's why they do because of six tackles, the referee can go, "I want to go back to the two tackles back, please check." I think the guy was offside a of forward pass, and the third referee go back and said, "Yeah, it was forward pass." Okay, we'll go back, change over. Yeah. Well, you've talked about it, you know, Mitchell Lake's pass in 2007. Everyone in the world saw it except the, the three officials. Why couldn't the, the referee upstairs and said uh, to the ref, uh, forward pass? Okay, the referee goes, stop, back here. I'm just going to have a look at this here, forward pass, uh, uh, penalty to New Zealand. 
Yeah. So, on the run. so you are in favour of it for things no, like I that. I think it's good, but yeah. to an extent, then it doesn't get ridiculous. No, you know? but because I mean, if you give one team a challenge, even if it's one per game, you've got to be very careful how you use it. Because if you're wrong on your challenge, you lose it, like in cricket. That's it, but, then, but then maybe people are going to say, "Well, hold it!" Like, no, I don't want this because I want two challenges. Yeah, but no, then uh, otherwise you, you'll get well, to the point. See, as soon as you open a can of worms like that, Darren, unfortunately, people are going to complain. So yeah. the best is you either do it or don't do it. Yeah. I suppose it, it, it leaves teams their own decisions to judiciously use their challenge well, you define wisely. the parameters. Yeah. But anyway, it wasn't yeah. great rugby on the weekend by anybody. I think it's very, you know, it's just people are just playing rugby for the sake of playing rugby. England were useless. Um, and you know, I don't think the box were any much better, but they won. Mm. And I suppose to play Portland and win is not bad. <laughs> um, Australia 22-3 up and lose in 22-19. Yeah. Tonga, Tonga beat in Scotland and the All Blacks absolutely flogging Wales and I'm getting a lot of Twitters this week um, and there's some, some guy Wilson said I think all Australia should be behind Wales this week so you can get rid of Deans <laughs> 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 oh my goodness yeah What's well happening? look I mean, I uh, I completely agree with you on that. I think, and and I missed everything this weekend. I didn't even see the South African game. Aaron, Aaron I, you didn't miss much at all. I know, but that's I don't feel bad about missing it, and that's why, as you say, there. It's, it's not quality rugby. No. It's just typical bash bash, kick a goal, get down there, bash bash, kick a goal, fifteen man line. I suppose that was the highlight of the week. <laughs> but besides that. There was nothing else. Would have been interesting if uh, Wales lost the light out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Break I reckon away, if I was the coach captain, I would have said, "Guys, this is, let's just walk off the field, we'll forget this game." Yeah, but, um, the yeah. art of village rugby. I think line outs like that's almost as bad as having the line outs um, a more mm. from halfway in sevens like South Africa did last year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I get the uh, distinct impression that uh, David is now rugbyed out this year. He's, that's enough now. I think I'm rugbyed out, break. but I just want to see a good game of rugby. And the All Blacks are the only ones who can play. It would have been good to see France versus New Zealand at the moment because they're both two teams who are attacking. Yeah. You know, but again, it's just it's just a money tour. Guys are, are sick of rugby. They're not going to last. Yeah. Something's going to have to happen soon. Where the players' association said, right, that's it. No more tours at the end of the year. I think it's going to come in the next year. It's going to come because. Yeah. The, all what you do is you send your second team over there and say who gives a who cares. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, this is our yeah, so Simon. No, sorry. I know you want to move on, but no, no, you, no, what no do you rush. think of the the whole the crouch touch set as opposed to crouch touch pause engage? Is it working? Well, it's quite interesting because it's well, it's it's, it's touch. Was it crouch touch? Set set set, and they smash each other. Yeah. Yeah. But the other one was it was ridiculous. I mean, it's almost gone back to what it used to be when I played. Yeah, they never said yeah. anything. No, just get in there and smash each other. <laughs> and it's, the referees still get it wrong. Yeah. I mean, first scrum of a game, the referee penalises somebody. I mean, oh. how stupid. Yeah. Well, first, you just get the guy and say, guys, enough, come on, get up and do it again. But the referees want us to still. The referees, unfortunately, can still win and lose a game for you by one decision. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem with the, the scrums. I mean, I've, I've got no idea with scrums, but... I mean, even the All Black scrum and a couple of things uh, pushed the Welsh and the, both teams collapsed and the referees said play on. So some referees don't allow it, some do. So it's still a bit of a nightmare. You know? It seemed like we got pinged a little unfairly. It seemed like we maybe got pinged a little unfairly against England with, with the front rows collapsing. Well, again, you've got a Welsh referee, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> he loves to blow. What did you think of refereeing in that part of the world. You've got to be careful what you say about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'll say it. You can just nod. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Can I just generally the refereeing over there? What did I you don't get him going now, John. Yeah. Well, no, I just think it's, it just shows the difference between Northern Hemisphere refereeing. Yeah. Over there, they allow you to play the ball on the ground. In the, in the Southern Hemisphere, they don't let you. Mm. You know. But again, it's 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 bizarre because if you watch the game and you take a bomb and you get tackled on the ground. And you've got five guys coming over and they still get the ball back. I don't understand how it works. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've got forward momentum smashing them and you get, you get either penalised for going over the top or the other team get penalised for hold. I, it's, just still, it's still a mystery. Yeah. That's why I still reckon in that situation, if you've got forward momentum and you're smashing them, you've got five against one um, and somehow the ball doesn't come back your way, there's got to be, a, there's got to be something why it didn't come back. Yeah. But again, it's, it's a lot through the referees and it's just, I don't know, very frustrating. And but as I said, like last week, you know, I was in England two weeks ago and last week, I would have asked for my money back if I had to go and watch that. Yeah. 
Well, there were a few games over this. That's why I say I didn't mind missing uh, missing everything. It didn't, it didn't bother me. I wasn't rushing around to make sure I got back to see the stuff. I mean, I, I love watching the Springboks play, and uh, you know, just from point of view. But as you say, it's, it seems like we've had so much Test rugby this year. But also it's, Test cricket. Yeah. I mean, South Africa just been England, knocked over England, then they go to Australia. You have got New Zealand. I think no, England's in uh, India. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just twelve months of the year sports. I mean, yeah. that's why people get sick of it. It's just yeah, too well, much. Why don't you make it a fair income end of year season tour? You go for four weeks, play games in between, three test yeah. matches or two test matches, make it like it used to be, yeah. and have a fair income tour so it's not like Australia said Australia's played Wales after next week six times in 12 months. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's bizarre. There's too much. And it's, it's not actually quality, it's quantity. I mean, it's just a test match for a test match. You get another cap. Yeah. I can I can definitely see them going uh, full tours one year, so somebody tours another country one year has a full tour, and every yeah. other year they'll play uh, championships. Well, even the Tri Nations, the Tri Nations should be every like, second year. Well, what they should do is every second year, but next year have one off test each. That's it. Yeah. And then the year after have two tests. But you want to look forward to a new an All Black test. I, I wouldn't mind a year where we don't play the All Blacks. I really, or the Wallabies for that matter. Because yeah, I want to look forward to it the next year again. TV, that's where they want DS to yeah, fill the money. Yeah, but John O'Neill's you know? gone now, so... The only thing I suppose in the weekend, Argentina got their backsides kicked. You know? Yeah. By the Irish. Yeah. So the world rankings hasn't really changed. Australia's still three, and they've done, they haven't done well at all. So how, how, how stupid are the, qualifi- the rankings? Yeah. <laughs> all right, Dave, well, we're going to leave it there. Uh, that is the final flush out of the year. Oh, what a show. No, we've got one next week. Australia's played next week. What's happening? <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> no, we'll let you uh, we'll let you gear up for your fiftieth and uh, and it'll be a break and we look forward to doing it again next year when we start gearing up for super rugby. They're already starting pre season now, can you believe that? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, Vanna Crew, I saw him this week. Pre season has already started with the Bulls. Uh, we spoke to Evan Etzebeth today. He's, he's been given a week off because he's come from tour, but the rest of the team pre-season has started. I mean, how, how, how long do you think these guys... You can see why the guys are bored. Yeah. This is, that is no more they're not happy. I mean, it's just 24 hours a day for 365 days yeah. a year. That's why we're getting players now. And how many have we spoken to this year who are injured, who have said they are just loving the fact being that injured. they can just put their feet up and relax. Exactly. Yeah. But also, uh, I think Richie McCall's taken six months off next year as well. Yeah, he's cotton-wooled. And, mm. yeah. and it would also seem, Darren, the same for the spectators, uh, d- David. Uh, a lot of spectators, people not even like missing games. Not well, even that's like, why you're not seeing full stadiums. Yeah. Well, but the thing is also, why would you want to go, and I think a great example was the Super 15, and then you go and watch the Curry Cup. I mean, the same teams play, a different jersey, and then nobody turned up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's the same team. It's the same, it's the same rugby team. Something's got to give. John O'Neill has. He's gone. I think he's half the problem. Let's see what else gives. Well, I just think they've got to be really smart and look at, um, you know, if you look at uh, baseball in America, I think they play about what? How many games they play? 140 games a year, don't they, in baseball? Yeah, they do, yeah. No, they play a lot. They still get, some of them get full stadiums every single time. So there's got to be something that's, a drop, that's getting these people to go. Where in rugby, we... If you have a week, 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 you're going to get less numbers. If you yeah. play badly, no one turns up. We're in America. I suppose that's all they've got. They're pretty bored. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, their baseball stadiums aren't exactly that full, eh? If you look well, at baseball Well, I think games, one of the teams, of the, uh, was it the White Sox or one of those teams, always have a full stadium. Yeah. Well, Chicago, I think it's Chicago Cubs. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they, you look at some of the baseball, and there's not, there's not full crowds there at all. So there is a lot of baseball. But then there are a lot more teams as well. And there's 200 and something million people as well. So it's not like the same people are going to watch baseball also, every week. I suppose week. they own, actually own the Oval, so everything's a bonus, like Twicken and Twicken. Yeah. And they make money every every single test because they own, they own the their own Oval. Yeah. Well, Dustin, who's our resident Michigan uh, expat, might uh, throw some more light onto onto the baseball thing but yeah I mean with a lot more people in there and a lot more teams and not everybody seems to get to go to baseball games plus of course you know how many people are travelling in America uh, at yeah. any given time who want to go and watch a baseball game so with all those factors added in whereas people come here don't necessarily want to go to a rugby game so well, um, I mean the thing is that's, that's, that's probably the biggest concern with rugby is if you think about it is you know the it's the actual people you know you've got New South Africa as a religion New Zealand's a religion mm. you've got Wales you know, Scotland's struggling badly. Um, Ireland, you still get the faithful. 
You know, he's still get the old people, the people who've been watching rugby for years will go. Mm. They're not necessarily enjoying it, but they go because that's what they used to do. Yeah. You know, you need to get the younger guy, the younger people to come along because that's what sport's all about, getting the young as well. Yeah. You know, it's just okay. not happening. All right, Dave. Listen, right. Thank, thanks. A PGA clap for David Campisi. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. It's been awesome chatting to you in the flush out this year. We look forward to it next year. And uh, please don't forget your invoice. You're late. Are we? Sure? Yeah, very late. <laughs> for this. Yes, you need your Christmas <laughs> money. Come on. <laughs> so, please remind her, invoice. Uh, thanks a lot, Dave. And we, um, yeah, I'll see you down uh, in a couple of weeks' time there. But uh, thanks a lot from our Balls team for your contributions. And hopefully we'll have more of the same next year. Oh, just quickly, uh, I don't know if you've heard about Clay Cooper. Yes, he wants to box. He wants to box. He's put, he's, he's put his um, He's put his rugby career on hold. He's going to do some boxing, but... I saw in the paper today where Sonny Bill Williams actually said that he will give half his rugby league contract to Quade Cooper so he can play rugby league. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. So on the, um, I think it's the Sydney Morning Herald or the Daily Telegraph. He's actually come out, Sonny Bill said, he'll give his half of his wages to Quade Cooper. To come and play rugby league. Play rugby league, so obviously, so because at the moment Cooper can't get a role because they've got salary caps in rugby league, see? Yeah. And so Sully, Sonny Bill said oh, he'll take half so Quay can go and play with the Roosters with him. Wow. What a great manager. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Oh, brilliant. So he's going to box in a couple of weeks. Sonny Bill Williams is the main event, and he's the underneath. So. Yeah, Sonny Bill against Francois Boerta, and on the undercard, Quade Cooper mm. fighting against. It should be uh, Andrew Flintoff, because he also wants to box. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let them fight each other. I don't know what these sports are. How do I say? <laughs> he's on a good wicket, though. Well, maybe it'll be Andrew Hall. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> just, come, just come from behind. Yeah. <laughs> don't, turn, don't turn your back. I've got a couple of people I could think who would do that. Don't turn your back, Quaid. And we're not talking about Saturday's referee in the England game. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, yeah. there's David. Thanks a lot, bud. All the best Cheers, and uh, love to Cheers, the family, okay? Yeah, speak to you soon, guys. Cheers, Cheers guys, David. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Ciao. Bye. There we ciao, go. Ciao. The flush out with David Campisi. Oh, I'm going to miss him. <laughs> this is... Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time. Balls.co.za